This video will cover sections two and section three of trig test number one. So let's start in section two. Here we're just finding the value of sine, cosine, tangent, etc., etc., for these different angles. So my suggestion as usual draw it first, then look for the sides of the triangle. If it's a triangle, look at the x and y values. That'll tell you what each value is going to be. So Let's start with cosine of 300. First, find 300 degrees. It's just past 270, it's right there. Now connect it to the x-axis to make a triangle. Cosine is the x value. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's got a long and a short side. The x value would be the short one. And the short side of a 30, 60, 90 is always 1 half. Number two. Here we've got tangent of 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 would be just short of 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. So this reference angle right here would be a 30 degree angle. And so this is a 30, 60, 90. That means it's got a long and a short side. Tangent is the y, which is the short side, divided by the x, which is the long side. So it's the short side divided by the long side, or in other words, 1 half divided by a square root of 3 over 2, which would simplify if you flip the bottom fraction over to 1 over the square root of 3 and then rationalize it, you would get the square root of 3 over 3. Number 3, cosine of 7 pi over 3. Now, for convenience, because we're used to counting by sixths, not by thirds, Let's rewrite that as 14 pi over 6. So we're going to count by sixths. So there's 6 pi over 6, 7, 8, 9 pi over 6, 10, 11, 12 pi over 6 would be a full circle. Then we go two more. 13, 14 pi over 6. So our reference angle here would be a 60 degree one. Notice it's closer to 90 than it is to 0. So it's 60, not 30 or 45. Um, Cosecant is 1 over the y value, or 1 over sine. This would be the long side of this 30, 60, 90 triangle, which is the square root of 3 over 2. But we have to take its reciprocal. So flip it upside down, and you get 2 square over square root of 3. Then multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. And you get 2 square root of 3 over 3. Number four, secant of 210 degrees. Let's find 210, there's 180, so it's 30 past that. That means my reference angle is 30 degrees. So I've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle again. That means I've got a long and a short side. Secant is one over cosine. Cosine is the x value. The x value here is the long side. The y value would be the short side. So we want the x value, which is long, which is square root of three over two, but we want the reciprocal of that because secant is 1 over the cosine. So cosine is square root of 3 over 2 and just like the problem before, actually cosine, sorry, is negative because it's to the left, square root of 3 over 2. So the reciprocal, just like the problem before, is going to be 2 square root of 3 over 3 except it's negative. Then number 5, the cosecant of 150 degrees. Let's find 150, sorry, negative 150. Well, there's negative 180, so back up 30 degrees, and it's right there. Cosecant would be 1 over the y value, or 1 over the sine. This would be the short side of this 30, 60, 90 triangle. The short side is always 1 half, and it's negative, so 1 over negative 1 half. Speaking of negative signs, I just realized that number 2 should also be negative, because this is a negative y value. So a negative one half up there, which would be negative square root of three over three. Okay, now back to here. So for this one, we're gonna flip the two over one upside down and you get negative two. Okay, number six, tangent of 19 pi over four. So let's count by fourths. One, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 8 pi over 4, and then you can keep counting around up to 19, something that might be a little bit easier. 
is to subtract out 2 pi so that we get a coterminal angle. So if we subtract 2 pi, which we could rewrite as 8 pi over 4, then you might notice that would still leave us with a bigger answer than, uh, than 2 pi. So maybe we subtract out 4 pi. So that would be 16 pi over 4. So that leaves us with 3 pi over 4. That's where the angle is going to be. Same place as 3 pi over 4. That's a coterminal angle. We subtracted two complete circles from it. So there's 3 pi over 4. And tangent is the y over the x. Now, this is a fourth of pi. So it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. It doesn't have a short and a long side. It has a medium and a medium. It's isosceles. The two legs are the same length. They're both mediums, which is the square root of 2 over 2. So tangent is the y, which would be square root of 2 over 2, divided by the x, which would be negative square root of 2 over 2. So the square root of 2 over 2's will cancel, leaving you with negative 1. Number 7, sine of negative 270. So negative 270 would be up here, rotating around that way. And so sine is the y value, which is 1. Cotangent, negative 11 pi over 6. That's over here. And we connect it to the x-axis to make a triangle. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent's y over x. Cotangent is x over y. So the x value, this is a 30, 60, 90. It's got a long and a short. The x value would be long. So square root of 3 over 2. The y value would be short. So 1 half. The 2's will cancel and leave you with just negative square root of 3 over 1 or negative square root of 3. For number 9, we've got tangent of 720. Let's find 720. There's 360. Make another circle. That's 720. Tangent is the y value, 0, over the x value, 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. Sine of 14 pi over 6. So. We already graphed 14 pi over 6 once. There's 12 pi over 6, and then count 2 sixths over. 14 pi over 6 would be right there, connected to the x-axis to make a triangle. And we have a short and a long side, because it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Sine is the y value, which here would be the long side, which is the square root of 3 over 2. That's all sine is, just the y value. OK, so there's that. Um, Let's try section three now. So first off, here we've got Pac-Man. And so in the first question, we want to find uh, the area of the shaded part of Pac-Man, which would be this part. OK. So. First off, to find the, we find the area of the entire circle. So the full circle has an area of pi r squared. So pi times the radius squared. The radius is 7 inches. So pi times 7 squared. Now, we don't actually want the full circle. Pac-Man doesn't take up the entire circle. He leaves out this 20 degree slice. So, what angle does Pac-Man actually make? Not 20 degrees, that's his mouth. The shaded part would be 340 out of the possible 360 degrees. So 340 out of the 360 degrees make up Pac-Man. So it's 340 360ths out of the full circle. So now we just have to uh, multiply the stuff out and reduce the fraction. So 7 squared, of course, is 49. We know that. Pi is pi. And when we're reducing a fraction, we're going to consider this stuff, these whole numbers, to be on top of the fraction. So I'm going to put it over 1 as a visual aid. Then this fraction we can reduce as well. Hint, they're both divisible by 20. So divide them both by 20, and you get 17 on top and 18 on the bottom. So we reduce that fraction. Now, I don't think 18 and 49 will reduce. So let's just go ahead and multiply it out. 17 times 49 would be 8 
33, and then 18 times 1 would be 18. And it won't reduce anymore. Okay, number two. This time, we want to find the length around Pac-Man's head. So that's this length right here. So from this point to this point, around this way. That's the length that we want, S. Okay, so again, we want to start by finding the full length around the circle, which has a special name. That's the circumference. So the circumference has a formula of 2 pi r. What's the radius for this Pac-Man? 3 inches. So this would be the arc length all the way around the circle, including his mouth. We just want the length around his head. So let's say from lip to lip right there. So it's not a full 360 degrees. How many degrees of rotation would that cover? So it would be from there to there. Well, instead of a full 360, subtract out the 50, and it is 310. So 310 for his head, and then the 50 cut out for his mouth. So the fraction here would be 310 out of 360. Now we multiply stuff out and reduce if we can. So first off, 2 times 3 would be 6. So we get 6 pi in there. And again, I'm going to put it over 1 as a visual aid. And then can we reduce both of these? Yes. They'll both divide by 10 because they end in 0. So just cut the zeros off. You get 31 out of 36. Now is there anything else we can reduce? Yes. The 6 and the 36 will reduce. You can do that because 6 is on the top, 36 is on the bottom. So divide them both by 6. That would give you 6 there and 1 there. Okay. Now multiply across. 31 times 1 times pi. 31 pi. And across the bottom. 6 times 1 is 6. There's your answer. Reduced as much as it will reduce. Now, number 3. So, first off, we've got foam fingers. And so, in case you've never seen a foam finger holding up a single finger like so, it's supposed to say we are number 1. But, Marty's math buffoonery belies the fact that he is not a true member of the math club. So clearly, he only came for the pizza. So Marty's going to be the one whose foam finger says something besides we are number one. So let's see what each of these is. Sine of 90 degrees. There's 90 degrees. Sine's the y value. So sine of 90 degrees is 1. Second guy has cosine of 0. Zero's right there. By the way, this would be radians because it doesn't say degrees, although it's the same value. So cosine of zero is the x value here, which is one. So that one works as well. Tangent of pi over four. Let's find pi over four. There's the tangent. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So the tangent would be the square root of two over two divided by the square root of two over two, which is one. And then cosine of 270. Here's 270 degrees. Cosine is the x value. The x value there is 0. So we found Marty. What a poser. OK. So there's that. Um, if you have any questions, come talk to me. The retakes will be due by next Thursday. Retakes due. So this would be Thursday, not of this week. Of course, I don't know when you're watching this. So not February 25th, but I'm going to give you until March 3rd. That's the last day. It's going to be in the, uh, what's it called? The assessment center. So please go down there if you want to retake it, unless you've made other arrangements with me. The assessment center is open only on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But they are open uh, through first period from 8, 8 a.m. through first period, and then fifth period through 5 p.m. So go there. Um, 
make sure you've done all the homework and whatnot that you're supposed to do. Otherwise, I'm not going to grade it. But if you do have any questions, come see me in, in my tutorial time. That's basically every day before and after school. Okay, have a good one.